All right, perfect. I think we're there. Great. All right, all right. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so let me just put this in the chat really quickly and then we're gonna get started. Um. All right. Hey, y'all. I'm not wearing weave today, so I need to get my hair done. But happy Mother's Day to all the mommies, Kay, out there in the world. All right. And if you're not a mom, but you take care of people, then you a mama, okay? Because my students call me, my students tell me happy Mother's Day probably for the last three years and I ain't had no kids. <laughs> so, happy Mother's Day. Um, and thank you for your contribution to the world, okay? I truly believe that being a mom is like one of the best gifts that you could ever have, okay? Um, all right, so let's get into the market. So today, I'm going to go over something that we talked about on um, the automated call on Monday, all right? So a lot of people asked two questions, okay? The first question was, is, um, what was the question? A lot of people asked about 7-2 putting it all together. So it's only a certain amount of depth that I can go into with this assignment because again, I am on YouTube, but it's literally gonna be the exact same thing that y'all all have for that assignment. Y'all know how to put in the pieces just from your own brains. Once I go over it, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, all right? Um, as far as the automated call being posted from Monday, two things. First one, remember I showed my live account on it and for legality reasons, my my manager told me I needed to edit that part out um, so that like that's not saved because of the numbers. And so he edited that part out, but then when we tried to upload it next, it said the video process processing was too long because um, y'all know we were on like for we were on that call over two hours for the people that was on it so he has to go back in and re-edit it but let me see here right here processing abandoned videos too long so he has to go back in and do it and then that video will be up all right um, I want to go over last week, last week, we, as I mentioned before, I'm not going over too, 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 too many trades, um, right now, just because of like what's going on and me being a, a mommy, once I get out my first trimester fully, then I will be probably trading full, full, full time again. But I do want to go over this setup because we talked about this last week. So where we were last week, we were like over here somewhere, somewhere over here. And remember I talked to you guys, I told you guys this had not yet hit that negative 27. So I was waiting for it to hit that negative 27. Then we had our overall break and retest. All right, cause we talked about, we had divergence way on minor structure over here, but we had this major structure break and retest. I think this was somewhere like Tuesday, whatever the case may be. Remember I told you guys, look to see price pushing back down. Cause we were like right here last Sunday. Remember I said, look to see the price is gonna push back down because we were near a foundation level. So that foundation level is basically here um, where price came and consolidated some. So ultimately price just consolidated, 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 then shot up, hit the negative 27 and then completely rejected and came back down. All right, uh, we do have divergence here. So look for this to like kind of, let's finish out that divergence first. All right, this divergence needs to finish, but I could see you GU pushing up at least until this, um, basically this little support level being tested as resistance. But let the divergence finish first. Um, I'm probably not trading this week because you guys know how I am about not trading when you're emotional. And this pregnancy thing, I'm still trying to get the hang of. My hormones is definitely all over the place, but 
Um, it is something that I wanted to go over in detail with you guys today in regards to entries, which lines up with, again, for the automated people, y'all 7-2 assignment. And also, it's just a good refresher for everybody. And then people who just are on YouTube, who don't really understand entries fully, you guys can kind of piece stuff together with this. Um, I actually, I'm not teaching fully right now, but I do have one group still in motion from like earlier this year. Um, and they're all graduating this week, but two of them last week went over this trade and I thought it would be a great trade to go up on Sunday night call. So that's what we're going over. All right. So this is one hour structure. Um, is Melissa on here? I think it was gold, right? Yes, it was. Okay. I thought so. Hold on. Actually, I'm going to be able to answer my questions. Yeah. Cause I. I hear everything that I wanted to remark. All right, so, um, all right, so we're on major structure right now, but I'm about to go into minor structure and I'm about to reverse so we can see this like how as it plays out. All right, because a lot of people like when you're trying to get the hang of trading, it's easy to look back in the past. And to be like, oh, yeah, I see a clear as day now. But as it's playing out, like, you have to be able to see it. And you have to be able to take advantage of it while it's playing out in order to for you to take money from the market. Does that make sense? All right. So there were two reasons I was looking for a buy in this area. What are they? Just first, refresh. Negative 61.8 in divergence. Divergence. All right. Yes. Yes. And we had a foundation level here that completely broke through, but we never had like a retest of it. And we all know foundation levels mean what? Consolidation. Consolidation. All right. Okay. So I'm going to um, back this up with a replay and just act like this is real life structure. All right. And we're like in the market. So um, I guess I'm just going to redraw everything because I didn't want to, but um, all right, I'll just redraw draw all of this. But OK, so just like I even talk about on Sunday night calls, whenever I'm teaching, what is the main thing I say you need before you can enter the market? We never just hop in the market. The only time we get in the market is when we Come have a this, but Break and retest. Break and retest. Yeah, a break and a retest. Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this up. Here. All right, so boom, boom, boom. All right, so price is doing what here? Breaking. Breaking. All right, so we're gonna put it a red box here. And then ultimately, before we can enter, we don't just enter right here. Before we can enter, what are we looking for? Retest. All right, a retest of the structure. Now, there's something I always say that you want to look for when you are looking at a trade because it also gives you another confirmation that price is not just about to break through that structure. Because remember, when you're sitting on trend lines, you have two things that can happen. The trend line will either be respected or rejected. Okay. Exhaustion. Well, respected or broken through. All right. So if it respects, it's literally going to test it, right? And then like, let's say right here, all right, let's X the replay out for a second. Let's just say in general, cause I want this to be like a teaching moment. So price can either respect this and push back down. That's respecting a trend line. That means I'm not breaking that trend line. I'm just respecting it, okay? Breaking it means I'm about to push through it hard. Does that make sense? I know I feel like I'm, I really feel like I'm teaching ABCs right now, but I feel like people actually need help on, on this assignment. So I want to make sure it's like in depth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So breaking it, we push straight through. All right. So now at that moment, we talked about where you either have momentum or exhaustion to confirm it. This exhaustion means that I now have buyers. I no longer have sellers. If it was a seller's 
then this would be super bearish and it would be pushing back down through this trend line. Does that make sense? Yes. When yeah. you look at a candle, so people who are somewhat new or whatever case may be, when you look at a candle, you have an open, a close, a high, and a low. All right. So where the candle opens is here. Where it closes is here. How high it went was up here. How low it went was right here. So that means during this time period in which this candle was forming, it pushed down this low, but it tested that area. It did not close at this area, which means that would have been bearish momentum and the next candle probably would have formed under this point. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, good stuff. Yes. Okay, so... Because it has exhaustion, it means that we pushed down, we tested this area, but we rejected it and pushed back up, okay? That is what you call your retest. This is what would have been your entry as soon as you saw that exhaustion forming all minor structure. This will be your blue box. Now, there was multiple ways to enter this trade. I'm going to show you the next one in a few, but I want to go over this first, all right? So... This would be your entry for minor structures. So even sometimes in the chat when I talk about, okay, you guys, like if you don't really understand minor structure, wait for your major structure break and retest. This is where you understand minor structure to be able to take advantage of minor structure trends. Minor structure always give you a better in entrance or um, a better entry than major structure. Like it makes you... Um, Okay, so let's say price is diverging. Some people who are completely insane, completely just jump in because they're like, oh, this is a channel or this is diverging. So let me just hop in right now before breaking for the break and retest. The break and retest gives you a better entry before you have to wait for price to completely like push in that direction. Does that make sense? So you have a better entry at the lowest point than waiting for it to get higher and then entering. Doing that is entering on major structure, which is still good because you're still going to make money, but you won't make as much money as if you understood how to enter on minor structure. All right. I want you to learn both because, again, even when it comes to reading the charts, understanding major structure only will not get you the best entries. Okay. Because even think about a four hour candle. In a four-hour candle, and I'll go to a four-hour in a few so you guys can see what I'm talking about. A four-hour candle can be made of 100 pips in one candle, right? So if you happen in on a four-hour or one-hour time frame, and let's say that one candle is 400, I mean, it's like 100 pips or whatever, where inside of that candle are you going to get in is the question. Does that make sense? And that can either make or break your drawdown, which, depending on your equity, can make or break your account. Make sense? Okay. So at that point, after we have this break, this retest, now we start pushing higher, 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 right? So at this point in which we have a stopping point, what comes here? Your Fibonacci. Yeah, A to B. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. At least I know people be listening, okay? All right, so at this point, we have our fib structure, okay? Now, again, there are two ways in which you can enter, all right? I always talk about trend line breaks and retests or the break and retests of support and resistance, okay? Support and resistance, you can either draw it as a zone or students, which are black lines, like that's basically the same thing, but you're, you'll deal with boxes. Same boxes, no... Same boxes is basically this um, red and blue right here, but you're dealing with structure, okay? So price playing out, price playing out, boom, boom, boom. So I'm gonna put this on pause for a second. All right. So we have a full, we have support that breaks and retests over here, right? You can put this as a zone also, where you have all of this basically zone, like I will look at this as like resistance right here that breaks. 
So this would be, you would just, I mean, you can put this as a red box as your break. And if you go back on old Zoom calls, I talk about this also, but it comes back and retest as support. So this is like kind of like levels, like, I mean, I'm calling it levels, but it's support and resistance. Every time, anytime I talk about on Zoom calls, also on, on Sunday night calls, when I talk about, oh, this support is going to come back and retest as resistance, or this resistance will come back and retest as support. Those are entry opportunities also if you miss the trend line break and retest. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Yeah. So yes. again, point A to point B, for anybody that's confused about drawing fibs, the point B is always... I never draw a fib, and I've talked about this also. Please put your microphone on mute. Um, I always talk about over and over and over again that you never, ever, 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 ever can put a point B until that trend is finished. So you can't draw this fib if it's all the way over here and you don't have structure yet. Does that make sense? The only fib you could draw, like let's say you're on a smaller structure, which I mean, this is the 15 minutes. So I don't want you guys going like below this, but like, let's say somebody was like on US 30 doing like five minute structure or whatever. And they traded these minor structure fibs. Like if you become a scalper, cause you know, you guys know that I teach you structure. Once you learn structure, you could be a scalper, intraday trader or swing trader. That depends on you and your personality type, right? Now, if you guys see here, I'm going to stop the replay for a second and then put it back on just so I can go back to that little point that I just drew. Um, so I'm going to show you guys step by step. So here on this like minor structure, this is where, do you see how this was the first high right here? Do y'all see that? On minor structure, this is like the baby structure though. And yeah. then you have a new high. So when I tell people like, I don't adjust my fibs on major structure, I don't adjust my fibs on major structure. But if you have a structure like this and it's like minor structure and the absolute impulse is not yet finished, you can adjust it until you have your finished high. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yes. Does it, Kendrick? That makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So you can't adjust it until you have that actual major high, right? And then even at each point, right? So you see how here, if I put the fib here, you see how at this negative 27, it dropped back down from this first impulse right here. So even if you go time frame by time frame, and again, I don't really want you guys trading on five minute, but I'm just going to show you guys this because on actual minor structure, everything still lines up. Because five minute candles make up 15 minute candles, 15 minute candles make up 30 minute candles, 30 minute candles make a one hour candle. Structure is structure, they're all the same. But the higher the time frame, the more confirmation you have in your moves. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. So you see how on this little five minute, and again, I don't want y'all entering on five minute. Um, if you are at the point where you trade indices and you're like, you had all your proficient wins on regular currency and you want to get into indices, this is how you like take advantage of that smaller time frame. But again, never trade minor structure when you don't understand where you are in the overall market. Clear? Okay. Crystal. Crystal. So yes. that's that structure. Let's say I go above a little bit. And even when y'all do y'all's assignments, it's the best way I can explain it is like this. When everybody did the second assignment and y'all break it down to 30 minutes, one hour and four hours, super easy to go through. Then when you get to 30 minutes, it becomes more challenging. That's because it's minor structure. So now imagine doing that on 15 minutes too. Does that make sense? So the smaller you go, the more complicated it is. Does that make sense? Because you have so many nooks and crannies that you're working through. All right. Yes, yes, makes sense. Okay, so even this next high, and again, this is only if you're like actively like trading in this trade. Let's say we push it to here, right? 
Hold on, is that one finished? Nope, I lied, that one's not finished. So hold on, let me pause this, Boom. pause. All right, does everybody understand when I say this one's not finished? Like you can never put a fib until that structure is finished. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so this impulse has to be complete. A pullback is only verified once price pushes up and then pulls back. You can't call this second candle just because it's a bearish candle a pullback. Let me make that clear for anybody that's brand new that don't understand that. Okay, so this pushes up, this pulls back because you have a series of candles that go up, away, and come back down. All right, same thing at the very highest point. Now, if I play this out some more, here is where we have boom, 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 this whole thing forming into our retest that is here. Voila, right there. Now, this is your first, well, this is your second entry opportunity. Your first one would be right here on this trend line breaking retest up here. Second entry opportunity would be here for this buy. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Quick question. Would you yes. put a on the on the pullback to see if it completes or no? No, because it's already minor structure. So you don't have like you don't you don't trade against minor structure to go down. The only time you could ever trade against the actual trend that you're looking for is if price is in consolidation, but that consolidation is like a monthly or a weekly consolidation where you have a hundred pips in one direction and a hundred pips back in the other direction. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Minor structure, like if it's major structure, absolutely. You can trade them down trends in between the up trends all day long, but on minor structure, I don't, I don't really trade reach races on minor structure. Now, I'm also not a scalper. So once you like start trading and you find your own rhythm and like your own flow with the market, you can 100% trade minor structure if you decide to be a scalper. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, would that be another break and recap? Um, yes, right here? Yeah. Yes. It would. So if you missed this entry, you guys, you could enter right here also. And this is kind of similar to the, um, you actually got three going on right here. And this is one of them things where I always talk about understanding where you are in the market and just being patient with your trade. Cause it's not going to always play out right when you want it to happen. No different than GU on um, last week's call. Remember I entered GU last week, Friday or the week before that. Cause remember on Sunday night call when I told you guys I was already in that GU trade. Like it's not gonna always like it consolidated literally almost all week until the end of the week. I'm not gonna pull my entry just because it's consolidating. Like you have to understand that that's how the market moves. And again, you're still making your money way faster than people do, do, that do stocks and everything else, okay? So be patient. Like your trade should play out before the end of the week, but do not, like you see how here where we have multiple tests, let it just run, okay? As long have, as oh, sorry. I have a question really quickly. Yeah. When it comes to that first entry, you got off the break in the retest and then you drew the fib on there. You waited for the retracement, um, the you can, pullbacks. You can exit at that high. Yes, if that was your question. Okay. Yeah, so if you entered on minor structure and you're going based off a of minor structure fib, you can exit at the highest point before it pulled back based off of that fib level because that's the TP level for that fib. Gotcha. Because even what I'm showing y'all right here, this is kind of like, even though I'm still on the 15 minute, if I go to the 30 minute, you'll see the break and retest like better for this support and resistance right here. Y'all see that? Okay. So here, and then again, there's three questions that I told you guys to write down last week before you ever enter any trades. So what are they? Is major structure with minor structure? Is there a break? Structure? What is the minor structure? Is there a break? Then did it break yet? There a breaking structure. Exactly. So 
Our major structure told us that we were at a reversal level. Our minor structure told us we now have an impulse. Okay, so our minor structure is now in a buy. Now, while we're maintaining this order, do we have any break of structures? If you don't have no break of structures, you should not be exiting none of your trades. This high or this low, this part right here, this is higher than this low. This is higher than these previous lows. Does that make sense? So we don't have a downtrend structure that has broken for this minor structure that we're now in. Can you say that one more time, please? Yeah, but can somebody please mute their microphones? Please, thanks. Um, what I said was, where's my, okay. What I said was, um, Honestly, I don't remember what I just said. Girl. The break you, of structure. You were talking about the lows and the break of structure. You said don't get out your trade until you the see lows. a break of structure. The lows can be the higher. You were explaining, you were explaining the lows. This, this low is higher than this low and this low. And so you said it wasn't a break of structure, so you shouldn't get out of the trade. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Here we go. Sorry. Listen, listen. My memory is shot right now, Okay. I'm I'm dealing with all these and I, I am gonna blame it on my uh these pregnancy symptoms because they kicking my ass and I swear I'll be forgetting everything. Like I forgot what my keys were. Pregnancy brain. It's a real thing. You said what? Pregnancy brain, she said. Pregnancy brain, it's a real thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I said that the other day and my mom was like, my mom was like, are you here? Are you listening to me? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was we talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But anyways, um, okay. So I just want to make sure everybody understands this. All right. Now we have like this consolidation structure forming right here. Do you see all of this? Y'all see all this consolidation in this area. So all we did was retest, 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 retest up until the point where we hit RTP structure. Does that make sense? It's so yeah. simple. Yep. Yes. It's it's simple, but it takes a lot of practice, but this is exactly your patience. To assignment. What I want you guys to do is go back also on YouTube and find the faith where she went over, where she talked about how she'll just find random parts in her chart and then use the replay and then remark it. Okay. Because anybody that had questions on that on Monday, that will help you also. But this is literally that assignment ultimately in a nutshell. I'm just doing gold instead of UJ. All right. But I want to get used to like practicing these entries and just like just paying attention. Ultimately, that's all it is. Like it's literally just paying attention to what's around and paying attention to structure. But this is the reason that trading is so hard. The reason it's so hard is because you can't just pay attention to one thing and be so tunnel vision focused on this thing. It's like you have to multitask everything. Like you have to pay attention to where you are. You have to pay attention to divergence. You have to pay attention to your Fibonacci. You have to pay attention to your zones. So much is happening at once that is like, oh shit, what's happening right now? You know what I'm saying? But if you like really just peel it back and just like go step by step. And again, just ask yourself them three questions. What is major structure? What is minor structure? And is there a break of structure right now? I got a question. What is minor structure? Is there a break of structure? Yes. So does the break and retest come before the break and structure or does the break and structure come before the break and retest? Structure is always forming as the market moves. So that's not, that's not even a valid question of what happens before the other because structure is always forming. Downtrends always forming, uptrends always forming. Your break and retest just verifies your entry. For whatever. Okay. So, so in a reversal. So, if, so if it's going down, I got my trend line, right, and it breaks through the trend line. 
and I'm looking for the break and retest. Do I get in? If if the if the retest if the if if it didn't break the structure, but it does retest the trend line, is that a valid entry? So you see what I'm saying. Well, what I no, I don't see what you're saying because let, listen to what I'm saying real quick. If it's in a downtrend and price is just descending, 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 there uh, is no structure that's broken. It's just a downtrend structure. Right. So, so, so I, so I got a trend line on my downtrend. Yes. And uh, it, it, it's, it's respecting the trend line, but then it breaks the trend line. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a break of structure to, to, to look for my reversal. Like you, 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 you am I making any sense? You're making sense, but it just depends on what time frame. Because your break of structure on your five minute and fifteen minute is going to happen way before it happens on the higher time frame structure. I understand okay. what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, it's like structure is always forming. And like I mentioned before, uh -huh. regards to like I I want you to see it like this, and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna go to a one hour. All right, so let's just actually do what I said about the um, candle thing. So this is a one hour candle and this is a whole little, let's take this whole one hour right here. All right, this is one one hour candle. I'm gonna take two actually. I'm gonna use that one and then I'm gonna use this one too because this one's smaller. I'm gonna put them both in yellow so we know what we're talking about for this conversation. Um, but I want to show y'all this. So I'm actually go to five minutes. So you can see it. So do you see how these are? This is literally a whole uptrend right here, even mm -hmm. though it's one on the one hour time frame. So what I'm saying in regards to does structure come first? What I'm saying is, is that structure is always forming. So it's not a thing of whether the structure, are you looking for a break of structure before you look for your break and retest? What I'm saying is it depends on what time frame because your break and retest can happen on a, let's say you're looking for your 15 minute buy, right? You wait for that break and retest to happen. But as that break and retest is happening, that structure is also forming because that break and retest is what's making it now go from a downtrend to an uptrend. Okay, I think I got you. But on major structure, it's still going to be a downtrend because on major structure, the highs and lows, just like on your second assignment, are way different than your highs and lows on minor structure. Facts. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? What I just said yeah. to him? Yes. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So y'all see how here we have all of these candles inside of this, this whole one hour. So really, the one hour and when I went to one you see how it was a little bit outside so we have a little bit of this candle and a little bit of this candle but technically there are four 15 minute candles that make up a one hour candle right now again i can't just make it directly on this one because it's gonna cut some of it out or add some either way but if i go to 15 minute now what i'm saying is the reason you want to enter on minor structure and again, this is one impulse candle, but this one candle is 281 pips. Does that make sense? So yep. this is why when I say like, I want you to guys get to get good at understanding your minor structure, um, your minor structure entries, because you don't want to always wait for those big impulses to happen before you're able to take advantage of a trade or before you're able to execute it, your trade. Is it that you Jessica, already want to be in that trade, right? Yes, you want to already be in that trade before the overall move happens for that trade. Exactly. Now, again, you can have, I don't know if I still got these markups on here. Cause I know I want to wear one not too long ago. Um, Yeah, I think I deleted them. Please say no. Okay, no, I didn't. All right, so no different than here. We have minor structure right here. We have major structure right here. Again, when you trade the highs and the lows and you understand the highs and the lows, hold on, I'm gonna use a replay on this too. <clears throat> so this can make sense. Okay, so. Let's say we take this structure here. From this break and retest, we have 
52 pips that we can take advantage of. Then the overall major structure break and retest of this we have. And also let's go over this too, because I know this is going to be a question. We have, a, we have 52 from the minor structure, 104 from the major structure. When the trend line breaks and retests, all right, sometimes it will consolidate. Always just pay attention. I always say this. Make sure you understand what you're near. If you see a zone near, price can go up a little bit more further than the actual retest of that trend line. So we see it broke right here. It actually touched it right here as a retest, and then it just retested multiple times. Let's just put a box right here, too, so this doesn't confuse anybody. You see how it's retested this multiple times, right? It was a zone up here. So be careful what you're near because price can go a little bit beyond it. If you're near any fib levels, be careful. If you're near zones, be careful because price can keep retesting it up to the point where it like hits that area that is next there, whether it be a zone, a trend line, uh, well, not a trend line, a zone, a uh, fib level, so forth and so on before that overall move happened. Did that make sense? Yes, would you just yes, hold so we didn't get into yeah. this? get in a bit of drawdown before the actual move happens or would you wait yeah, no i would still enter because i ain't got time to keep just looking and watching as long as i know what the overall move is i'm not tripping like okay. this this drawdown is only five six hits from this right here from well actually let me do it from this very high right here to this high right here that drawdown is nine pips i could care less Got so it. I would just enter. Um, but if you are one of those people that's like super like, oh my God, I hate drawdown. Like, I don't want to be in it. Like, I hate drawdown too. But some stuff I don't trip about. Like stuff like this, I would still enter and just let it play out. Especially if I know I have all my confirmations, like my zones, my divergence, everything from there. Yes, I will 100% just enter. Um. <clears throat> So I want to talk about something really quickly because on Sunday night call, or actually on um, Monday. Monthly check-in. Yes. What is wrong with me right now? It's okay. <laughs> on Monday night call, somebody asked, she was like, um, can you get your automated students to give testimonials and talk to us too instead of just your... Um, your one-on-one -on -one and group students because we want to have questions for them. So I do have somebody, um, Tierra's going to talk to you guys and also other automated students. So this is the thing that's the difference between automated students and group and one-on-ones, right? So like, I don't really know automated students. I want to get to know you guys, but it's kind of hard <laughs> to form. No, I'm just being honest. It's kind of hard to form like personal relationships. So I try to check in when I can, whatever case may be. And that's why we do also the course check-in call. But the people that I usually like, um, like get cool with, and it's probably like I can count a good 11 of them are people who I see they face like every day or all the time. And then I'll just like, check in with them and hit them up or people who like they'll tag me back to back to back on their Instagram stories of trades that they just be in and then I'll just be like oh that's great and then we end up talking through DM or something and so like um that's how I got cool with like Leslie um Kendrick is a face that I will just always remember because he always on Nikki actually I remember your face and I know you by name too um um no charlie you a group student you don't count um i i need you to remember me um just it's not that i don't remember y'all though because listen we have forever like i'm not leaving you guys in the dark i'm pregnant please right now. though please though i still committed to these these like monthly check-in calls with you guys like even this past monday I was not going to get off that call until everybody got a question asked. I just wanted people to stop raising their hands. <laughs> and I definitely do appreciate that. I appreciate that, Jess. Listen, like, I, I'm here to, like, this is... Good to know. I really am here to help you guys. But just because the person asked, like, no, it's... I think people, so many people have heard, like, one on, from one-on-one -on -one and group students. Um, but it's also because this course just got... Like, the automated course was just done in... November 
October, November, it launched the end of October. It hasn't even been a year yet since that course launched. So like these students, remember Nellis graduated over a year ago. Like their testimonials come after they've been trading. Like this, the automated course is so new that y'all have to get time to like, a lot of you guys are still doing the course. And even the ones who like are finished, now you have to get into your groove of like, you, your own individual personalities on the charts. Like trading is the mastery of self, okay? But because the young lady asked, oh, can you have somebody in the automated course give a testimonial? Tiara's on here. And then I'm going to stop recording so y'all can ask her in-depth questions because I don't want too much of my course information on YouTube, but she is just going to give her testimonial real quick. And uh, yes, I feel like some of y'all have already actually heard from her, but Tiara, you can go ahead, my love. Thank you. Hey guys, good evening. Um, my name is Tierra. For those of you who don't know me, um, I signed up for Jessica's automated course as soon as it dropped, which was in October of last year. Um, so I'll just give y'all a quick little rundown of how I got really acquainted with Jess. So I signed up for the course as soon as it dropped. She hadn't, um, you know, put out anything about like really. Um, how she's doing now about the course. So I signed up for it. I went, I was so excited. I went through the course and literally like 24, 26 hours, I completed the entire course as I thought I completed it. So I wrote her email, super excited, like, hey, I finished the course, you know, what else is next? It makes sense, but is this it? You know, take a look at my chart, blah, blah, blah. And um, a few weeks later, she, uh, did a um, automated course call. So I get on the course and she's like, yes, it's, uh, I'm excited for you and all, but you didn't really get what you were supposed to get out of the course. And so it was kind of like shot my dream down because I was like, well, damn, you know, I thought I, I thought I was doing it, you know, but she, um, she encouraged me and really recommended that I go through the course and take it week by week. And she even encouraged that when I get to time in number two, if I don't fully grasp the concept of the assignment to redo it. It took me two and a half weeks to do assignment number two. Um, and I did it over until I got it. And I moved forward and I completed the course, I would say in about 12 to 13 and a half weeks. Um, I did encounter a few bumps in the road just with my own personal life because I have two small children. My daughter um, actually caught COVID in December around Christmas time. She was on the ventilator. She was hospitalized for approximately 14 to 15 days. Um, so that took a toll on me and my family as well. And But I stay committed to the course. Um, I finished the course, I believe, in maybe the end of January. Um, I don't really like to talk numbers because I don't believe that that validates anything. However, I will say for the sake of people who um, need numbers, I started my account, I believe, with twelve or $1,300 at the time. And I think within a week, I was already at like 2800 The second week, I was at 56 The third week, I was literally like 8500 or something like that. And it kept going, but um, it it worked. I it was not easy. I can't say it was not easy. It wasn't a fly by night like, oh, I took this course, I'm instantly profitable. That was not what this was. And even still, I have my own battles every day because rule number one in trading that I learned from Jess is I shall know thyself. She gave me the tools. And I have to take these tools every day consistently and work toward like being a better trader. Like I'm building my trading journey. I have taken some loss, but the loss I have taken, I have to be accountable and say they were not because I did not have the skills. They were because of my own self getting in my own way. Either I got greedy, I over leveraged, I got in too soon because I knew where the market was going instead of waiting on all confirmations. Like these were things I got in my own way, but still overall, I'm way above what I started with. I got my money back for the course. I got money back that I lost from two years ago when I started thinking I could trade. Like it works, but you gotta do the work. 
Um, I know people wanted to ask specific questions that I'm willing to answer, um, but I did want to share my testimonial about the course before I divulge in any specific details regarding whatever people want to ask me. So I do want to just say something real quick. I just want to point out two things that she said. First thing is, is that she said that when she went over the course, she did it in like 12, 13 hours. And then I was like, nah, sis, you got to go back and redo it how it's supposed to be done. This is a 12 week course, even though y'all have like, I think it's 11 to 12 assignments total. You have to do each assignment week by week. And there are people that be like, like the bad part about the automated course that I absolutely hate that it wasn't like this with my private and groups because I could control what they do is that with you guys, you can easily go through the video and be like, okay, next video and not really do the work. I'm telling you right now, this is not no magic pill. Like I'm giving you the tools, but you have to work it. And the thing is about trading is I'm teaching you how to see, okay? I'm teaching you how to see and your consistency in doing the work is what helps you see it. And only after you do that, will you get it. Hopping on week by week and not doing the work or even hopping on Sunday night calls. Omar made that $10,000 from hopping on Sunday night calls because he was consistent and then he would go practice what I did himself. Watching these videos and not doing the homework is not going to help you. And with assignment number two, trying to do two of them and then being like, oh my God, I don't get it. It's not going to help you either. You have to do them all. And then it's training your eyes. And I promise you, just like even people say on Monday night call, like at first they couldn't see that shit at all. And now they see it. And it's easier. And then you look at the market in a completely different way. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, are there any questions that's not in depth of the course that y'all want to ask here before I stop recording? Yes? No? Maybe? So. Jess, I had an entry question earlier. I just didn't get a chance to ask you. Oh, what's the entry question? Is there a way... Or should we look for a way, if, if there is, to corner off um, price for a retest after a break? Is there a way to do that? Or is that something I'm, I'm just making up in my own head? Like, you know how you corner off price sometimes? No, I only corner it off coming down from a top-down analysis just to see what. Oh. Oh. For the entry, I don't corner off anything. Once I have the direction, I'm just waiting on the confirmation for that entry. Got it. Thank you. No problem. And then that just is I have a question too. Okay, what is it? Um, so um I think when we were on Gen U, um, when we talked about that first break and retest for that first entry, mm -hmm. and if you enter in that first entry, um, what would be that indicated for like I should exit here? Like when you know when it first hit that high point, and then you could have exited before it went back down for the retest. Um, is it that I would be looking for like a supply demand zone? Um, no. as it's on that way up? No, you could have um, exited at the trend line point. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to just share a screen and show you. Um, hold on. Share a screen. All right. So again, what I was saying before where it comes to trend lines, where it's like they're either broken, respected, or rejected, right? Or they're either respected or broken. At this point right here, and this is minor structure, again, this would be like a minor structure impulse correction continuation, right? Let's just say this structure here. You would exit at this trend line because you can't assume that this trend line is gonna break. Does that make sense? You never wanna have the assumption that that's gonna break because this could push straight back down like this. I may it may have been on GU. It was when after the trend line had broken and retested, and then you entered. It may have been on. I mean, gold. It may have been on gold. But you were or, asking, how would you have? You were asking, where would you have exited before this came back down? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm answering. So this okay. year, last week we had divergence. This we had divergence. Like, and again, I was on way minor structure with this divergence. So I'm not trying to teach y'all bad habits, but I kind of caught like a reversal. 
um, point down here, quarter century. Cause we were just descending for forever coming from all the way over here. So I knew that that reversal was coming soon. So all in this structure, I had divergence. Like, again, I don't want to teach y'all nothing on five minutes just because I don't want y'all trading on five minutes. Once y'all get kind of good and understand and are able to see structure, then that's that. But um, your first exit point before that would have reversed would have been here. That first one hit this negative 27 right here. And then your exit would have been at this trend line. If it had already pushed to the high, there was no way to get around this because this structure never hit negative 27. So you would have just been waiting in this trade. But the thing is, is that if you didn't get in on minor structure, you wouldn't have even entered until you had the break and retest of this trend line. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we definitely want a 15 minute stretch when we were talking about that. Okay. So yeah, you wouldn't have entered this structure until you had a break and retest of this trend line in the first place. Okay. And Hey, oh, and then Melissa, this is the one where um, you guys, so this was drawn on a higher time frame. Um, this actual first part of this was drawn on a higher time frame. Also, Kendrick, I want to answer this question because some people will say, okay, well, why didn't you move your, that fib to that next high? Remember last Sunday when I was like, this fib had not yet reached that negative 27 here? Y'all remember that? The reason that I didn't adjust it to this next high and I wouldn't have is just because at this point, this was my first pullback and it pulled back to a PRZ level. Even though it was a 23.6, 23.6 means our continuations. So at this point where I didn't see a continuation and price came back down, I knew it had to pull further to another trend line. So that means this first fib structure was not complete. So I'm not just going to be like, hey, okay, let me move it to the next high. I'm going to let that fib structure complete. Does that make sense? Not really. Can you can you kind of yeah. say it one more time? All right. What I said <laughs> was last week we were here. Right. I'm going to keep going for that just for more sense. Last week we were here. Um here okay what i said was this is the first high in which i drew the fit and it pulled back to 23.6 do you see that yeah okay what i what i said was i'm not just gonna assume i'm not just gonna move this fit to this next high because this didn't touch it it never hit my tp mm -hmm. yes. so yeah. typically when I come up this high, it will just hit the TP. But the fact oh. that it's, what I'm saying is, what does our 23.6 mean? Continuation. Okay. So at the point in which this structure, and again, it's minor structure, so it's okay if it breaks. I just understand that, okay, that net structure now has to form. So at the point in which I didn't have a continuation, and then we pull back further. I know that, okay, this isn't a 23.6 pullback level is going to be deeper than that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. And then at that point, whoever asked me on the last one, um, could you draw a fib going down? You can draw a fib on this structure going down, but not the first structure going down. Because this fib was drawn on a higher time frame from that impulse, whereas the the um the uh what's it called the gold one was so minor of a structure that you can't draw you i would not counter trend trade that but this right here this came to this negative 27 and then respected this entire range the whole time that was another reason that gave me confidence to not pull that trade so i'm gonna just draw a zone right here so y'all can see the structure that i'm talking about so here we have support resistance. Now we have this support level here. So we have point A to point B. Put that at the bottom of that. Point A to point B. And then I'm just going to play this out. So we have that retest. This is where everybody else would have entered if you don't understand like minor, minor structure. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 That yes. is yes. your structure. 
then this plays out here. So now that minor structure, remember the minor structure downtrend is just a pullback for the overall structure uptrend. So once this gets respected and this yellow zone's not breaking, I have no reason to really like, and then also this, remember we have a foundation level right here also. Does that make sense? So we yeah. tested it, boom, but we already expecting consolidation right there anyway. Because remember when we did Sunday night call last week, I was like, this could push down a little bit um, because it's a foundation level. So just be mindful of that. What does our foundation level mean? Consolidation. Consolidation. So that just always lets us know where we are in the market, that consolidation. Consolidation is not a bad thing. It's just like, it's just like running, like somebody run full speed, you can't run full speed forever. You're gonna have to take a walk and cool down before you gather to run again. So all we did, we respected this level the whole time. We basically respected this area the whole time. And y'all can honestly even use, if I drag this down some and make, oops, not the foundation level thing. I need to realign that on a monthly. But if I drag this down some, y'all could even use this entry here, the same as we just went over with the gold in regards to this level of resistance that's being broken and retested as support. Good question, hey, Jess. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Um, when you're uh, entering your TPs on MetaTrader, do you enter in the exact um, specifications of that TP or do you kind of short it a little bit? That way you can guarantee it just in case you're not sure if the spread at that moment is going to mess you up or not. Do you kind of like play a little bit short or do you put exactly your TP, whatever accordance they're at? No, I do. It it depends because I will actually put my fib on my MetaTrader 4 that I was looking at for my actual chart and then get the line up of that. Because these numbers are just, depending on what your broker is, these numbers can be just a little bit off. And then I will go into my actual, like on my phone. I don't trade on my phone at all, like in regards to markups. But if I have a fib level that I'm looking for, or a number that I'm looking for, I will literally go to that number or I will go to the chart on my MT4 or MT5 because I have both, draw that FIB structure on there and then set that number, whatever number lines up with that TP1, I will put that as the TP. Got you. And do you think uh, maybe one day you'll be able to do a video on how to do the FIBs on the MetaTrader? Because it's a little bit different, a little tricky on the MetaTrader how to get it pinpointed perfectly. Oh yeah, that's super easy. But yeah, um, is on the right. I mean, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Thank um, you so much. That was a great question. Hey, Jessica, what? I got. A question. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me second. One second. I just want to re-answer this. So, if you go with GM MetaTrader Four right here, right there, and you click this, this, uh, the thing that has the little fib right there. You see it? Who can't see it? Y'all can't see this. My, my, my. It keeps going to different screens, but I kind of see. It's the second one. That's because I, I think when somebody talks, it goes to the person talking. If you just pin the chart, that, still show me. If you just yeah, you're still that, sharing like, screen. Then you'll be able to see it. I'll just make the video so that it's not complicated. Oh, you don't want her. Oh, but again, I do not trade on my MetaTrader 4. I want to be very, very clear. I don't mark up on my MetaTrader 4. You need the full trading view. I do not believe in just looking at a chart on your phone and that being it. I think you need a 100%. It's okay to like, and I even have trading view on my phone, but it's okay to like mark up everything on your computer and just like for your, what is called maintaining your order, look at your phone to make sure no structures are broken. But in regards to my actual trades, they're only taking on MetaTrader 4. Okay. All right. I got a quick question. Yes. Yeah. All right. So earlier in the call, you uh, showed us, I think it was on gold, and you asked us what was the two reasons why we got the trade. It was the emergence, and then I believe it was a 61.8. And then you went through the, all the other steps. You did like the FIB and everything like that. And then, like, later, you eventually did the, uh, the zone, the one hour zone. I don't know if you remember that. 
And then once you did that, I was curious because was that, were you just doing that just as another uh, opportunity to get in and you're actually using the divergence, the 61.8, the original ones as confluence? Or did we need additional, did we need to find new confluence for that one hour zone? If that makes sense. Uh, I didn't draw a one hour zone. I was just showing them that you use support and resistance also to enter. You could use support and resistance to enter just like you use trend line breaks and resets to enter. I wasn't drawing a one hour zone. Like that wasn't a one hour zone. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, and also, so, it wasn't a confluence thing. It was just a matter of after you have all your reasons to get in, now you need your confirmations to get in. So I was just going over two entry ways to get in the market. Okay. Yeah, zone wasn't a real zone. It was just showing the port turned it or resistance turned into support. And I don't know if we could talk about this on the monthly call, but I've just noticed, like at least with divergence, it seems like it's like a delayed reaction. So that that's basically what I was going to get at. That was going to be my next question: is when we do we're looking at divergence, sometimes it seems like it'll it will react right away, and sometimes I see like you'd have the divergence and then we can kind of wait for it to play out. And I guess my question is, is how do you know when the divergence completely played out? So I want everybody to answer his question. Who follows me? And I- Oh, uh, the confluence. When is it a break? Break and retest. Break and retest. You wait for the break and retest. Divergence can keep diverging as long as it wants to. So you don't, you never just enter off of divergence alone or assume, hey, this is divergent. So it's about to reverse right now. Never. Like divergence can diverge as long as it needs to and wants to, because none of us control the market. So you can have a channel for literally 200, 300 pips, right? Okay. So it's not even that it's delayed. It's just a matter of it's not complete. So that structure has to come. And the only way you know it's complete is by your confirmation. That's what I'm saying. You have all your confluences of what you want to happen. That's it. But you don't enter okay. confirmation for what's happening. And I, and I just want to say uh, thank you for everything you do. And congratulations on the new little one that you're going to be having. It's going to be a lot of work. I know you're an exemplary person and you've done a lot in your life. But I, I guarantee it's going to be a lot. And I just recently had a baby about a year ago. and It's kicking my butt. So I hope it's a little bit easier for you. So once again, congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so you guys, it's 9.33. Um, Y'all might have to wait. Tierra, you, because I told her it's Mother's Day and she's a mom of two and I told her she did not have to be on this call all night. So Tierra, you want to just do your questions next week? It's up to you. If you want to end it, I can do it next week. I'm available I'm every Sunday night. You already know that. I'm, I'm okay. Um, and for those, a lot of y'all do hit me up on Instagram and on Facebook. I always answer every single message. Every single message that people hit me up. It might not be right away because I do work a full-time job and I got two small kids. But um, if y'all send me y'all questions, I will answer them. I will still get on next Sunday and answer all the questions that people ask me. I'm okay with that. It's on me. Girl, you just opened up yourself for a whole <laughs> rampage, okay? No, you know, I answer their questions. Now. I, 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 the disclosure is I'm not answering them right away, but I do answer y'all questions. I do want to say this, though, okay? Um, this is what I want to say, though. Please just be mindful of everybody that's in a group to help. Please be considerate of them. Like even in the Facebook group, you have like we have Liz who's so amazing. I mean Tierra an ad man. Y'all wore faith out. Okay. She like she's a nurse. Like it's like people want to help, but at the same time, it's like everybody has their own individual lives too. And I know firsthand to be honest, like, and this is why even with some of my students, like like y'all heard me ask Nellis last week. I was like, Nellis, so you gonna come back next week and do some markup? He's like, uh, we'll see. Like, it's like when you're trading, you're trying to get to a goal. And so you have to be mindful of all of the, like, even when me were teaching, like, y'all know I used to only take a certain, right now I'm not really taking anybody because I have to protect my, my spirit for this baby. But like, 
it's a lot of energy and I have to take on each person's energy. And it's like, I'm cultivating these people and every single person wants something and requires something. And regardless of whether you get paid or not, it's like, really the money doesn't add up to the amount. Well, for me, the amount of energy, because I put my all into it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to think about how many hours of not just being on a call with somebody, but checking homework, like then having to answer questions. And then it's just a lot. So um, that is why I have not taken any new students all year, to be honest. I was taking groups. And I said that once I, once I get into my second trimester, I'm going to take I'm going to open back up for groups. And then after that, I'm probably only going to have the automated course after I have this baby, but we'll see. But it's no knock. It's just, and I didn't even get mad at Faith when she said she can't do it no more because it's like, I do think that people feel entitled. I said from the very beginning with the automated course, like that's not where homework's checked. Like, that's why I have the homework examples. Like, I feel like I'm very upfront and honest with everybody. And I also want to just be clear. This is for people on YouTube. Trading is hard, okay? If you're not willing to do the work, do not buy the course, please. I don't want, like, I'm doing this to help people for them for their lives. But if you are not the type of person that's going to work, I don't want you, like, to even try it. Like, I think that there are a million ways that people can be millionaires in life and everybody has a different avenue. Some people like, there are millionaire artists out here. You know what I'm saying? That paint, like everybody can become a millionaire doing whatever it is that they love. So find your passion and whatever your purpose is. Okay. Um, okay. So Tiara, I'm going to see you next week. All right. And honestly, um, don't be mad at me, y'all, when I say this, but Tiara really has a life too. So I am going to tell her, don't answer the, 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 the questions on the, or if y'all DM her, I don't want her to answer the questions on there just because I feel like it can probably be a question that helps somebody else also. So what I want y'all to do is if y'all want y'all's questions answered, put it in y'all Facebook group and just say, this is a question I want Tiara to answer on the next call. And then we just going to have a list of like, let's say maybe 20 questions. Cause I don't want her, this is something that keeps happening even with Liz, like, or even with me. And like, that's why I made that video for assignment number two and just put it in the group. Cause it's like, if everybody asks, oh, how do I do assignment number two? And then you go over and just exert your energy explaining to each individual person. It's way easier to just make a video one time. So everybody has it. So just in case it's a question that other people need also, I just want to collect all the questions and then we'll address them next week. Okay. Okay. And we'll do and that. Yes. So um, I'm actually put, I'm, I'm going to actually make a post in a Facebook chat and be like, if you have a question to your wants to answer next week, write it here. And then whatever your question is, write it below in that chat. And then we'll go over them next week. Okay. Cool. No. Okay. Hey, hey, Jess, before you go, um, mm -hmm. the video from Monday's call, um, do you think it'll be easier to put it in two parts or since you said it's too long or? Oh, no. I just sent it to my manager for him to edit it again. So whenever. Oh, he... Okay. Then, um, yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Have... Okay. Um, at first, it was just the account thing. He was like, you know, like, first off, like, you don't have nothing to prove to nobody. But since you did show your account, I don't think that, like, they saw it, but you shouldn't, like, put it in a recording. That's stupid. And then I was just like, I mean, okay. So, like, he edited that part out. And then that took a couple of days. And then by the time I actually got it back to, like, um, upload it, then it said, file too long or whatever and video stop processing but it, I promise y'all will get it like and I'm so sorry because damn near now it feel like it's been a week but also make sure y'all have all watched the previous calls also because a, a lot of those questions are like I feel like sometimes on, on the um, Monday calls I answer the same questions just in a different way for the most part but for the 7-2 question that was what we did today 
All right. All right, y'all. I want to uh, can I ask you one question? Yes. Just one question. Uh about the Monday, the Monday, the Monday night class. Uh -huh. Will it be posted on uh off on uh YouTube? No, it's only posted in your Facebook group because it's not for the public. Okay. How would I have uh, how would I get access to that? Okay. How did you get access to the Zoom link? I know you had you, you put you put a number in there. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> I know you have. Uh, I, I know we have access. You know, because I know we pay we pay for the course. Okay, so you telling me you in the course right now? What I mean is that's what I'm that's what I'm curious about. So, friend, if you in the course, you got to go through the information in the course, and that gives you the access to the Facebook group. Okay. Okay. But I'm just confused because the access to the Facebook group is the exact place that this Zoom link on. So you sure somebody ain't give you that Zoom link? They ain't slide it over. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> hey. Just time to have a good night. <laughs> Thanks for your time. <laughs> Answer. I want to know, Mr. Harvey. Somebody gave you this fat, this Zoom well, You know what? I'm 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 just now. You know, because uh, I I know that since I had paid for the course, uh, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of waiting for it for uh, mm -hmm. information. Yeah, I got to chill with them. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't until last month. Well, I just now noticed so that you have sent me a. a, a, a like, Something. Yeah, this time, like, huh? this time, like, 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 this time, this time, like, 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 this just read. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna still have a lot of questions, but you know, that, that, that's just the thought for me right now. You know, that's just the thought. So, I just take it. I just take it as it is right now. You know. Yes, sir. All right, Harvey. All right. <laughs> Somebody said Sandman came out with the broom. <laughs> I said that. We gonna, we gonna let you pass today, Harvey, but. If you if you if you found a Zoom link, then that that Facebook link is right beside it. So that means somebody done slid you this link. Okay. 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 No, he's been in the course since the beginning. I'm gonna vouch for Harvey on that one. He's been in the course, y'all. Y'all chill on Harvey. Okay. okay, Harvey. We'll see you in the Facebook group then. We'll get that answer for you. He's he not computer literate, y'all. Well, you know if, if, if he's, gonna... he's in the directory, guys. He's in the course. If, if you can, uh, yes, yes, he's been in here yeah. since like the first <laughs> month, dude, the second month, but he's just not computer savvy, y'all. Y'all got to chill on him. He's not computer savvy, it's not going on, but he's been in. I remember his face, he's been in. Yo, okay, well, <laughs> okay. okay well, well, look, Harvey, the Facebook group is right beside the Zoom link in your first module, okay? Yeah, okay, all right, bye, friend.